Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode for Chem Complete. And right now we are going to work on a practice session. So this practice session is going to cover hybridization and molecular geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of organic chemistry structures up here. And your goal is going to be to go ahead and analyze every single carbon in the structure and provide the hybridization of that carbon and the molecular geometry of that carbon. So this is compound one. This is compound two, that should be an H there, a CH2. And then compound three. Is going to be this right here. So take a look at these. You should pause the video, try to work through this and see if you can come up with number one, the hybridization state. for each carbon and then number two can you figure out the molecular geometry associated with each of these so if you have not watched the video or had a lecture on hybridization and molecular geometry I strongly encourage you to go back visit those videos earlier in the playlist or in the video list and then come back and attempt this so go ahead and pause the video and then come back and we will work on this together so I will see you guys in just a minute all right everybody hopefully you had a chance to work through this so the order for the hybridization here this would be sp3 this would be sp3 this guy would be sp2 and the other one would also be sp2 and this is because both of these are involved in a pi bond and whenever we have pi bonds remember that we have to have if there's two carbons involved in a pi bond you have your sigma bond but your pi bond requires p orbitals that are left behind that are going to host the pi electrons back and forth between these p orbitals so these are sp2 sp3 for the ch2 because that's a tetrahedral these two linear carbons would both be sp they're involved in two pi bonds and then sp3 for the methyl group all right so what about the ring here you should keep in mind that every point along the ring is a carbon and if every carbon is attached to two other carbons if it's in the ring that leaves two potential bonds which means that every single point where there's nothing else attached to a point on that ring you have two hydrogens which means there would be one hydrogen here this carbon would have one hydrogen here again each of these would have one hydrogen because there is a double bond present here this would be a ch2 this right here this carbon would be a ch because you also have this ethyl group coming off here and then this one would be a ch2 all right so let's redraw this i just wanted to go over that in case you guys had any issues with it so if i redraw this structure ch2 ch3 the assignment for hybridization and we'll go through the molecular geometry in a minute would be sp3 sp2 sp2 sp3 this one would be sp3 this one meaning this carbon right here would be sp3 don't forget about that one and both of these would be sp3 so a lot of sp3s here we do have some sp2 with the pi bond present on the right hand side However, most of this is all tetrahedral in geometry. And then, so what about this last one? We've got sp3, 
SP3, SP2, SP2, SP3, and this would be SP. And in case those who were wondering, I didn't include the lone pair here, this nitrogen would be SP. So, molecular geometry. Anytime we have SP3, we are going to be associated with tetrahedral geometry. Anytime we have sp2, we're dealing with trigonal planar geometry. And anytime we've got just plain old sp, we've got linear geometry. So going through here very quick, and I'm starting from left to right, this would be tetrahedral, tetrahedral, trigonal planar, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, linear, linear, tetrahedral. Okay, around the ring, all the sp3s would be tetrahedral. And the sp2s, both of these, would be trigonal planar. All right, and then we've got sp3, sp3, both of these would be tetrahedral. The two sp2s here would be trigonal planar tetrahedral for sp3 and then both of these guys are going to be linear all right so hopefully you guys found this to be a useful practice in terms of determining hybridization determining molecular geometry again if you're a little bit shaky on that go back and watch the video that specifically talks about hybridization this is just a practice uh session so that you can sort of get a little more used to seeing those examples in an organic chemistry context. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this useful. And I will be seeing you guys in the next video where we will hopefully get some more practice in doing resonance and a couple of the other concepts that we've talked about in Organic Chemistry 1. So I will see you guys for the next video. Take care.